It is a Saturday morning and we are here waiting for our ride that's going to take us on a tour. I think our ride's here. Never mind, it wasn't our ride. False alarm. Our first stop is the Apartheid Museum. Continue watching to join us and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll learn something new. There, I gave the white tickets. Yes. yes. Yeah, so that tells you who you are today. It says you are white oh. and yours says you are non-white. Yes, so I'm black. Yeah, okay. These are the pillars of the Constitution. So when you talk of the Constitution, that's what we had for the first time after 1994 when our country changed to be a democratic country and we had Mr. Mandela being the first democratic president. The Constitution was then introduced. Equality, freedom, oh. resistance, responsibility. Apartheid, it's an Afrikaans word which Afrikaans is derived from the Dutch language. Apartheid means apartness. It means apart and hate. It's more like a combination of two words. But here it's written more in an African word. So this was the language that was brought here and it was later known as the language of the oppressors because now people were forced to learn the language. It's not your language. Kids were killed in 1976 in Soweto because of the language. They were forced to learn the language and they said no, you know, and then we had those uprisings in 1976. So now this museum tells us more. It gives you just everything about apartheid. These were the signs that you'll find in all the public spaces. There were areas where it's written white only yeah. and non-white. Dry clean, public toilets, public stations, the bus stop, all these public spaces, the public parks, they're all written non-Europeans or Europeans only, meaning if you were non-European and sitting there, you'll be arrested. And when they say European, they talk about even the color of the skin, because that's when we talk of segregation, that, you know, during apartheid, people were classified based on the color of the skin. So you'll use the white gate uh -huh. and you'll use the non-white gate. These are the ID books, mm -hmm. and when you look at them, they're all different. Different in colors, and even the way they are written, they are different. Now, when you talk of the segregation, this is exactly what we're talking about. So even with your ID book, you were classified based on the color of the skin. There was a, a certain way of how uh, black ID books, or I would say ID books that were meant for black people, there was a certain way of, of them being written, of Indian, of white, and colored. You know, in South Africa, we have colored people. Of colored people in South Africa, we talk of a mixture of black and white. Then we have colored people. They mostly speak African because the Africans, remember, it's the language that came with the Europeans when they first arrived here. We had the first Portuguese, but the Lomu Dias, that was in 1488. And then the second one was Jan van Riebeck with the three ships in 1652. So they came and took over the land. When they arrived in Cape Town, because that was the first place they came on, and they found the black people. At the time, they were known as the Khoisans, which are known as the indigenous people of the country. They arrived and found them. Then we had colored people coming from there. Cape Town became more of a city for mostly colored people and the white. So when you look at these ID books, this is how now classification, you know, how it was done. And we had a lot of uh, Kosa speaking people, because they are also from the Cape, the Eastern Cape, the Western Cape, and the Northern Cape. Most of them quite very light-skinned to a point where where, you know, during the apartheid times, a lot of them would change. They were known as chameleon. A lot of Kosa speaking people used to do that. You know, they would change. Take your father's first name and make it your last name. And then you'll be rated as colored because of the advantage of you being light skinned. Yeah. So now, what the apartheid uh, government used to do, be known as um, a pencil test. Take a pen, put it in your hair. If it gets stuck, it means you are black. If it moves, it means you are non black. You they know, would so just stick it in there? Stick it in your hair, yes. Oh. So if it gets stuck, it means you are black. So this is exactly when we talk of the classification. And these are the real ID books that belong to people. And at the time, it was known as a dumper, especially for the black people. And with the black people, and it will have your name, your last name. It will write your clan, whether you are Swazi or Kosa or Zulu. It won't say you are a South African citizen. You'll be classified as a clan by your clan. Say, are you Zulu, are you Kosa, are you Tswana, and then they will write that. 1985 had at least 1,000 chameleons. People have changed. 702 colored people turned white. 19 whites became colored. One Indian became white. Three Chinese became white. 50 Indians became colored, you know? But at the end, it says no blacks became white and no whites became black. So it shows that blacks were rated as the lowest, lowest, lowest class. These are the public spaces. This is a train station. We have a black policeman. And when you look at them, they were not allowed to carry guns. They, would only, they were only allowed to carry sticks. He's making sure that the blacks are not coming closer to the white 
people and you'll find that on the entrance it's written non-europeans only meaning if you are not white you'll travel on that side europeans only meaning if you are white you'll travel there they were divided into two we have these stones. Each and every single stone that you see there on the left represents a person that died during the apartheid times. No estimated number, hence you see these stones all squashed in one place like that. And then as you walk up, we have these mirrors that has pictures of different ages, different races. It's both, it's all Indian, white, black, colored, all heading to the new bright South Africa. They no longer live in the old apartheid regime so that's where we're also going to the new bright south africa where the dawn is you know where the new life is yeah. it's all in there we have the skull of mrs place so now it goes back to where humanity began the cradle of humankind so this was the first skull that was discovered by dr robert broom at the stark caves in 1947 that proved that before us humans there were many apes on planet earth and exactly right there at the cradle of humankind wow. hence they say humanity began in africa yeah. we have the Khoisans, the indigenous people of the country so the Khoisans are known as the indigenous people of south africa even when you look at our national coat of arms, we have the two images of the Khoisans to show that they are the indigenous people of South Africa. The language they speak, no one can understand it, is called the clan language. They are known as the hunters and gatherers, hunting, always hunting and always in groups. Whatever that they hunt, they eat, yeah. they use the skin for their clothes. Quite very ancestral people as well, and they live long. So now, quite a lot of them protesting, saying that they are not being recognized as the indigenous people of the country. They want yeah. the recognition. So this is the original, quite very short people, the original Khoisans. They don't wear shoes, this is how they live. They'll always have that ostrich egg hanged on them. They'll open a small hole, clean it, and use it to store water. I think that's why they live long. They feed on greens that they planted. They don't use medicines. They do their own, they make their own medicine, you know, using the herbs, using the plants that they have. And they hunt animals, like mostly the antelope, and feed on that and use the skin for that as well. Like the ostrich egg, they would have that, they would eat that and then use it to store water. So they're also known as the people of the rock art. Everything they see, everything they experience, the battle that they will go through, they will paint it on the walls. These are the key points. When they speak, cam, it's wind, do, it's sand, memeru, it's bed. This museum is huge and we are headed to tour the inside. Unfortunately, we are unable to record. We are here with Cindy and we just finished doing our tour with uh, the Apartheid Museum. It was great, there was so much information, we loved it. And now we are on our way to... Soweto. Soweto. To Soweto now, yeah. southwestern township, which is in the southwestern part of Johannesburg. continuing with the art tour around Joburg and right now we are visiting Mandela's house. We are here at Nelson Mandela's house. He lived in this house for 15 years before he was taken to prison. When he returned from prison, he only stayed for 11 days because he had no privacy. This house shows how much has happened during the time he lived here. We were unable to record in the inside, but in the middle of the house, they built a wall so the family could hide and not get shot by the police. On the outside, you'll see the remnants of charring from the petrol bombing.
This tree is located in the front of the house. It is a sacred tree that holds the umbilical cords of the children that were born and raised here. Nelson's wife Winnie later decided to donate the house to the Soweto Heritage Trust. Now it's lunchtime. We are headed down the street to a restaurant called Sakumzi. It is a buffet-style restaurant with a variety of different African dishes. The restaurant is very spacious with a vibrant atmosphere. There is music playing to get everyone in the mood to sing and dance. This is Sam. Uh -huh. This is made of corn and brown beans. And we have, this is tomato and onion. It's more like a sauce. Maize with pumpkin together. This is very sourish. It's a sourish taste. It's also maize, but okay. the brown one. Yeah, this is the tribe of the sheep. And then this is the beef okay. sausage. This is beef. And then this is chicken, but the hot, the hot chicken. Yeah. We call it the hot chicken. The running chicken. The running chicken, yes. Yeah. That's the one. And then this is your frozen chicken. And that's a mashed potato. It's petty pan and carrots. We are trying every single thing. We have carrots, tripe, sausage, rice, regular chicken, running chicken, and different types of maize. They call this a seven colors plate because of how colorful it is. Now we are headed to Desmond Tutu's house, which is a walking distance from Sukunzi's. I didn't realize how close it was. The street is very loud and lively, and it is filled with locals and visitors. There are many restaurants and even some locals selling items on the street. Oh, so oh. as I was saying, that we don't see much of the house, because, but the main gate is there. Who owns this one? Because where he's been living, those are the bishops' courts. Because he became the archbishop in, in Cape Town, of Cape Town, for the Anglican Church. The, the young people that were protesting against yeah. the use of Africans as a medium of instruction. So you have come to where it happened. For us to be here today, it's because the kids were not approving, saying that we can't be doing a language that we don't even understand, a language that we were never even raised in, like we don't even know the language. And that's when I started, when it was introduced in schools, announced in schools to say we are now going to start using Africans as a medium of instruction. And the kids were like, no, we're not doing it. Started writing those placards saying that we don't want the language to hell with Africans, Africans must be abolished. Until came the day of the 16th, when it was declared now that no one is going to school, no one is going to work, we're all going to fight against the use of the language. We have a corner where it used to be their meeting place. They would meet there and then start marching. And here, this is the place where over 600 kids were shot and died. On the day when the young person on the photo, Hector Peters, he was 13 years of age and attending school here. It was a routine for him and the sister every day. He would walk from here to where the sister was attending to wait for her and then they go home. Until now came this day when he was crossing from one side to the other and then he got a stray bullet that shot him dead. And they're saying that that bullet was meant to disperse the Crowd. I mean, which you know it was not really true. And it was just a passerby. The protest was only amongst the high school learners. Primary learners, they didn't even understand what was going on. Right. So then he got shot, and then when they saw him being shot, tried to take him to the hospital, oh. only to find that it was too late. Hey guys. We just got back from our tour with AHA Tours and they were pretty awesome. Yeah, an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. If you come to Johannesburg, you need to do a tour with AHA. They were amazing. It was what we wanted. We kind of told them in the planning process what the places we wanted to go and what we wanted to experience and they made it perfect. We first started with Apartheid Museum. It was a really cool experience. There was so much mm -hmm. to the mu museum. I guess the only thing I would change is having more time there. I mean, we had over an hour I think but it was still there's so much history and it's just amazing to learn about mm -hmm. so much that I wish we had more time but mm -hmm. it was still great and it wasn't boring it was good information that made you want to learn and keep mm -hmm. it, and it kept you engaged I agree and they had different parts they had like a Nelson Mandela part and then an apartheid part the Nelson Mandela part they had artifacts during his time so that was nice to see like you don't get that when you're watching a movie you're standing there and you're reading these things it kind of hits different so I like that part of it definitely like that definitely they had a bunch of of many videos and speeches mm -hmm. from different people that were important pieces to the whole apartheid. Mm -hmm. It's just really cool to be able to listen and see their point of view at that time, just a little bit more of their story. So that was great. Totally encourage people to go see the apartheid museum. And then our second stop was... We went to, well, we drove around for a while, seeing different parts of Soweto. So that was really cool. Um, they really took our time driving around and let us see different neighborhoods. Yeah. yeah. And then we moved on to the Nelson Mandela Museum, or mm -hmm. his house. 
lot of, a lot of history there. Very entertaining. It was great. I think the only downfall with that one was there were so many people and the house was so small. It was so hard for the tour guides to keep us going. They would bring us into the house and share information. You want to like stand there and like look around and read everything, but it's hard because another tour is coming in. So that was the only downfall. Other than that, like it was really nice to see where he lived. And then after that, we went to go eat. Yeah, we went to a really local, it was a local spot, but very cool. It was, I forgot the name of it. Me too. Uh, we'll but, put the name on the bottom. Yeah, it had tons of energy. It was just a cool place to be at. Cindy was saying that's a place that she likes to go when they feel like stepping out and getting something to eat. The music was great, energy, smiles on people's faces. Mm -hmm. People were out there with energy, hustling, trying to make a living, trying to dancing and do what, what they do. It was just a great experience. I really enjoyed yeah. it. And the food was good too. And then after that, we went to Jasmine Tutu's house, which is right next door to Nelson Mandela's house. The only downfall is we couldn't really go inside. We just saw like the outside of his house. We also stopped by and went through another museum where the children protested because they were against the government trying to teach them a new language. Like, their museums that they have are so meaningful. The way they built it and like the meaning behind everything, it was just, I don't know how to describe it. It was just so, I guess, deep. I don't know. It was impactful. I think impactful. It's just educational and fun to learn the story. It really sits with you. It makes you think a lot about things mm -hmm. and just how, just think about the history and how things were and you know how things are and how things the history of different places so it was mm -hmm. a great experience and now we're home and we're tired but we are going to add a room tour so you can see how our Airbnb looks so let's go do a room tour first so this is the front door and as you walk in you will go ahead and see our kitchen our kitchen has everything you need refrigerator gas stove microwave toaster sink and our dishwasher then we have our living room dining room area so this is our dining room area where we use as our workspace we've been editing videos here and trying to plan our next trip then we have our living room so we have a nice comfy couch a tv it has netflix Netflix and cable. This is our patio outside and it's very different from the one in Cape Town. It's different because it's super small. That's all the space that I have. And then you have a beautiful view of Joburg. Okay, that was our patio and as you can see it was really small compared to our patio in Cape Town where we were able to have like dinner outside or breakfast outside we were also able to exercise whereas here it's so small I feel like we can't really do much. Okay, our bathroom. So here we have our shower, our toilet and our sink. I noticed that South African restrooms or the ones that I've been in for Airbnbs they have something different from the US. The first one I noticed is their light switch is outside. The second thing I noticed was there's no electrical outlets here. If you wanted to charge your electrical toothbrush or if you wanted to shave, like I don't know where they would put it or what they would do. But we're making it work with what we have. Okay, our last spot is the bedroom. It's very big and spacious. We have a king size bed. We have some closet space to the right. And then we do have a little view here. This is the same view as our patio. We could open the door and then we have like a little patio space outside where you could go out and look at the neighborhood when you wake up. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our time around Joburg and visiting the different museums. And I hope you enjoyed watching our mini Airbnb room tour. You guys have a great day. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Peace.